Okay, so uh, I've just been asked a question on uh, Dr. Hawkins has a uh, map of consciousness and has done kinesiologic or muscle testing. But for people who aren't aware of that, um, it's a method, it's a very popular method in, in the world. Uh, most kinesiologists you'll pick up in your yellow pages or on directories will be more of the simple type, which is like, you know, you can take a bag of vitamins and a bag of medications and they'll check your body strength which eat with each of the medications and stuff. Say, so this is good, this is not good, your body's going weak. Rat poison is not good for you, your body goes weak, but organic apples are good for you, your body's strong. So take, carry on taking those and stop the stop taking the rat poison, that's a joke, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but you'd get a clear, a clear yes, your body would stay strong with uh, an organic apple, and if you put rat poison on your body, your body would go weak, the acupuncture meridian's on there. Now Hawkins found out you can actually do this, uh, you need probably a higher calibration to get uh, accurate results, uh, a higher connection to spirit, but you can do this with statements, and you can actually have a map of consciousness between zero and a thousand, so he's done these calibrations. Also, um, so he's done a, a logarithmic, he's got a logarithmic scale, so the numbers are actually logarithmically increasing in power. So even a few points higher is dramatically higher if you go up on the map of consciousness with these calibrations. Now, people out there might be skeptical, but I can just share from my experience, I've met a lot of good kinesiologists and muscle testers, and I have absolute faith uh, in the thing. It's a technique that your body can be an indicator when connected correctly to getting universal knowledge from the universe. Now for someone at the level of enlightenment, what does enlightenment mean? Someone who's, de I, I'll just describe it uh, simply, someone who's released uh, their ego to the extent that they're no longer identified with their body and their thoughts as their sense of self. So anyone who's like feeling like I'm in my body and these thoughts are mine, i.e. you have a personal relationship with your body, this is me, this little cylinder, I can feel the cylinder around me and these thoughts, that's what I am. But in enlightenment you now get an experience of yourself much more limitless as your sense of self, uh, not, con not confined to being identified with the limited aspects of consciousness. Uh, so, or those who might have gone into certain books, like when you're going into the observer of your thoughts and the body, you get an experience of yourself which is not the thoughts and the body, and, you re and then you start to recognize that infinite self is you, and that limited identification is not really you, even though you might have experienced that your whole life. Okay, so now, uh, what was really incredible was that, um, now I can't remember the exact thing, but I teach someone at enlightenment, like one, like at full level, like someone like Jesus, I can't remember the exact numbers, these aren't the exact numbers, so it's like it counterbalances the negativity of 70 million people, just to be in that place of, of the infinite and having resolved and released the ego. So that's so much infinite light uh, what does that mean, practical terms? It's like one teacher at the level of 1,000 is counterbalancing the negativity of, of, let's say, 70 million people below integrity. That's like an incredible amount of power just to be in that light, and the miracles that would unfold from that presence uh, would be, would be uh, phenomenal. I've uh, been asked the question, like someone who's like uh, candidates running spiritual candidates running for the presidential election uh, and, and they're putting out a great spiritual message. Would that, in my, and let's say they're not at the level of enlightenment, would that be more powerful, let's say, than someone at the level of enlightenment? I mean, you know, I think it can only be, um, it can only be definitively answered through, um, through a muscle testing. Well, I'll tell you my intuition on it. You know, it's like this thing of, Someone in those fields of grace, in the infinite realm, for me, that is un it's unseen miracles. The, the miracles are unseen, are unwitnessed. Um, and for someone who's, who is bringing spiritual knowledge to the masses, that's very, very visible in the world. So if let's say there's a, a spiritual author on TV, 
you know, and that goes out to millions of people. That, that's a very, very visible experience of miracles. So, so the thing of, well, does visibility have a correlation to, yes, of course it does have an effect, but to what extent? And for me, actually, the invisible, uh, my intuition on it, it can be checked, uh, can Israel, is like, um, actually, it's the level of power which is more important than the level of actual words being used. Even though someone, you know, even the spiritual teacher though, can have enormous power. And it's like different teachers have different gifts, which when, they're, when they give their lives to grace, to spirit, it's like the gifts of the individual teacher are utilized in the service of that, of that infinite grace. So, so each teacher is allowing that light to come through. However, uh, I would say um, it's logarithmically more powerful to be in the grace. So that, those are the things which aren't witnessed. So for example, like, uh, let's take uh, Mother, uh, you know, like Hawkins called it, Mother Teresa, who was at the level of enlightenment. Um, it's really, really, uh, you know, like someone can come and be in their presence and suddenly their cancer's gone the next day. But it's not, it's, not really, it's not really publicized or witnessed, or it's just a coincidental miracle. So for me, the, the thing of the, of course, there's different levels of effect from someone. Like if, if someone's at a certain level and they're a great teacher, and that knowledge goes out, that will go out to a certain level of consciousness, and that will facilitate an enormous amount of, of change. But to be at the level of enlightenment, for me, is like, that much power radiating out every moment that they're in there, for me, my intuition would be that would be more powerful than a teacher at a lower level for their life, if you look at their life. And that's the thing of, I would say, Dr. Hugh Len, I'm not sure of his actual calibration, but I think that's the power of the invisible and that which is not really recognizable, even though it's been made recognizable, it's a very, very famous story. The, I mean, I'd say Dr. Hugh Len is a mystic, in my interpretation. Someone who just clears the data. I would say he's more of a pure mystic rather than someone going out there spreading knowledge. He's the one who just sit there and just clear the data of the world and not really be so much one that wants to get huge visibility in the world. But just him clearing the data of a whole prison, just the prison files, of a whole prison of violent inmates in, in Hawaii, I believe, and all, everyone getting well in that prison and closing the prison down without even meeting the prison. I'm sure he didn't want to, as I understood it, it was someone else who publicized him. It wasn't really him that sought the publicity. So that's the enormous power of just being in those mystical states. But for me, they're also logarithmic. Um, like I go to the 12-step groups 12-step groups are not calibrating at the level of enlightenment, but they're at a, uh, they have great power in the world. You know, I remember once um, just that energy of, 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 of unconditional love in a 12-step group. I remember once, so I, I you know, had m many addictions. One of them was uh, sugar addiction, food addiction, overeating. I remember once going, you know, and every evening I'd go, um, Actually, yeah, I, can, I can share this about different levels of power. I remember going to one of my early 12-step meetings and um, being immersed in an energy which is unconditional love, but it's not enlightenment. And I remember, you know, I would often go to the supermarket um, every evening to what was called Safeway then, it's called Morrison's now, and I'd buy a bag of donuts. And I went into that, meet, that food meeting, which is basically they're surrendering their addiction to, to God. And it's like a holy meeting where you surrender and you get a higher power to intervene on your behalf for whatever the addiction is. It could be drugs, it could be sex, it could be alcohol, it could be whatever it is. There are different addictions for the different types of things out there or debting or whatever it is. So, and then I went to the supermarket on autopilot and I couldn't pick up the bag of donuts. And I knew that was a miracle. I knew that was a miracle. Um, when I went to meet, so that's the kind of thing that happens at the level of unconditional love, but I remember meeting, uh, meeting Hawkins uh, and um, Hawkins talks about the, le the levels of, uh, the levels of uh, power 
And like, you know, for, for a group at the level of unconditional love, you can expect the miracle of release from addiction to stop. But you need a higher level of truth if you want serious illness to go, leave your body. So it's like he said, like, you need something at the level of A Course in Miracles. The lessons in A Course in Miracles calibrates at 600. So even at a field of unconditional love, like a 12-step group, your alcohol addiction, like when I go to 12-step groups, like lots of people have stopped their addictions, drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is. But you don't get that many people who've recovered from serious illness. You know, like I've got cancer and it's gone. You know, that doesn't really tend to happen so much. Or I've just, uh, what's another one? So, and, and he said, like, you need 600 for those mega miracles. You need a higher exposure to truth for the absolute clearing of things which are much more higher. So for physical illness, like, he, he reported this. And I think he's, he had, um, he was having a class of A Course in Miracles in Arizona where he, he was also in the 12 steps, but he had A Course in Miracles. And he also ran an attitudinal center group for those with serious illness and, uh, as well. And he recovered from 23 illnesses and uh, many of them life-threatening. And in that group, people with AIDS, cancer, uh, autoimmune illnesses all recovered. You know, and that doesn't really happen that much in a 12-step group. So you need that, so even though that, that type of thing is not really publicized, and it wouldn't really be stick in this world of anti-spirituality. But so a 12-step group has its purpose in the world, is that level of truth, more people can understand it. Now when you start talking about the world is an illusion, and it doesn't exist, even though that is far more powerful and radiates more power, its power is radiated at silent leads, not knowledge by the masses. But I, I was ready for his message, and I went and I met him. I remember he had so many illnesses. One of his illnesses was the same as my illness. Um, and uh, when I went, and this didn't really happen in a 12-step group, which is, which is an unconditional love, but he had gout. It was one of his 23 illnesses, which is pain, horrific pain in the feet. And I had gout, I had kidney failure, um, I had asthma. And I went to see him, and I, I knew he, he, his level of teaching, and his level of teaching for me is more advanced than The Course in Miracles, of just totally clearing your beliefs and getting into the infinite realm, which wouldn't be a mass market message. You know, like, you are not your body, you are not your thoughts, you are the infinite, it's not a mass market message, that's a lower level. So you tend to have smaller groups congregate as you get to one of his books, I mean, Letting Go, he's written a book which is really for the masses. But try, if anyone's a new, try giving a new person to spiritually eye, reality and, reality and subjectivity, they won't be able to read it because it's that advanced. So, but I wanted that level, I needed that level of a miracle. And when I met him, this didn't happen in 12th degree, and I touched him, I felt the tingling in my toes. And I knew he had, the, he had that level of power. He had transcended things which you need at a high level of truth to dissolve those level of illusions. So, for me, it's, it's a silent thing. It's a silent thing which can only be quantified through, through, um, through muscle testing, kinesiology. And I think you know, each teacher serves in its own purpose. Like some messages will go to the masses, will go to the masses. and some teachers are very archaic uh, and is not a mass market message. Even though I think there have been teachers that have made mass markets, certain authors, who have made mass market um, books uh, and made advanced teachings accessible to, to the thing. So I think it can only be answered, but I think there is, it is an exponential thing to be in those very high levels.